Oh, it's printed. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here at the top four at the Covenant Tulsa Star Wars Destiny Regional 2019. I am Zach. We are happy to have you here. Uh, we have Ian on the left playing his Tarkin Snoke deck and Keith on the right playing his Vader Greedo deck. Ian from Oklahoma City. Keith from Tulsa. I am joined also by some special guest commentators. One is Sugi from the Knights of Ren. Sugi, say hello so everyone can hear you. Oh, hi, all. Welcome. He didn't just say it. He yelled it. It was epic. Uh, so ahead. exciting. This, this top eight has just been nothing but excitement and high-level destiny. That first match, if you didn't catch it, Yoda, ver Chewie versus... Uh, Go watch it. Beckett. I couldn't think of his name. Beckett, Beckett Towson. Incredible to watch, so watch that. Uh, I'm also joined by Eric Wainwright, local Tulsa legend at Star Wars Destiny. I'd say regional t legend. <laughs> uh, multiple regional winner, the master of the Padawans, winner of Destiny Weekend, one of the best people and players of Destiny that I know. Eric, say hello so everyone can hear you. Hi, everybody. This is Eric Wainwright. What a, what a, I, was, I almost <laughs> spit up my drink there. A very humble introduction there. Now, if you're joining us uh, on what else YouTube, would you expect from Facebook, or Twitch, uh, please sound off here. Let us know the video audio quality so we make sure everything is up and running and that we can see the comments in the chat. If you have questions as we're going, please let us know. Now, before we get started, we got the mulligans happening for Keith and Ian. Uh, the point of the game is to defeat your opponent's characters. Each character has a health stat in the top right corner of their card. And these players are going to go back and forth taking actions until the other player has been defeated or is out of cards in their hand and deck. Uh, looking at you, Sugi. Um, hey, so, hey. Anyways, uh, if you guys could, I'm going to have Sugi run down, I believe, Ian's deck. Yeah. And then uh, Eric's going to run down Keith's deck, and then we're going to get started. So if you could give me a quick synopsis of what's going on. Yeah, so Ian's on the left. He's going to have Snoke and Tarkin, and they're going to do some things. They're going to do lots of things that involve indirect damage, which forces the opponent to make bad decisions over and over. So Tarkin's power action allows him to get rid of dice showing the same faces and do power or uh, indirect damage. Snoke lets you just do maximum utility things, kind of like the villain Yoda. And he's running things. Things like Chance Cube, Illusion, Jump, Wave, Speed, and Leia's Pimp Cannon for damage. So, lots of bad stuff. And uh, Keith over on the right is running uh, Vader Greedo, the Terror to Behold. Um, so, he has a lot of the Vader stuff that you normally see. Uh, he has four ec economy cards, the No Good to Me Dead, the two, two Truces. He also has the uh, um, uh, Friends in High Places, obviously, and he has a number of targets. His targets are Dagger Mortis, Dark Sabers, Vader's Lightsabers, Maul's Lightsabers, and then obviously Vader's Fist is the other one that's out there. Now, if, if you could, for the, those at home, what is Vader's Fist and why is that a relevant card here? Ooh. It's a five cost support. When it comes down, you get to roll it into the pool. You can then, after you resolve it, uh, exhaust it to roll in the pool, and it has a power action to roll into the pool. And if you happen to be running Vader, which Keith is, after you roll into the pool with that power action, you get to turn it to whatever side you want to. So the turn it comes into play, you get to use that dice three times, and it's not a little dice. It's got threes and four sides of damage, and so you get three activations out of it, basically the first round you play it, and then two every round after thereafter. Looks like Ian's starting off here with a force jump. Oh my gosh, and a f Vader Saber, like, Whereas, nutty. yeah, Keith uh, gaining a resource from Thede Palace, one of the best battlefields in the game right now, uh, to get a free money, first action. So force jump's really fun because you can blank jump. things out and then re-roll it. Yes, and yep. Vader, I mean, force jump is a great card against Vader. I mean, that's a meta call. I think. I think it's like one of the. It's a one cost mitigation or one cost support, which I love just in general. One cost dice, and then in this race, the two specials are just what you want against Vader, since removing his dice are not worth it. That's the, the kind of part. card I felt like was going to be super powerful. Now Vader here rolling two different sticks. That's short for melee. He's got a three and a four showing. It looks like Oof. the four cost a resource. The lightsaber showing two shields. Now, Force Jump is the kind of card, I bought like four extra copies of it early on because I just felt like at some point this would be a card in a lot of my blue decks. And so we'll see here, Snoke focusing to a special there on the jump. And again, this is without any resources, Keith's going to have to do something fancy or he's just going to get his dice blanked. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this is, uh, everyone is teching for Vader. So I'm glad to see Keith here in the top four representing. It looks like he's got friends, friends in high, high places. places. I was like, why don't you resolve it? Wait, so wait, wait, wait. Let's see what he Let's see what cost card. One, if you have two. a dice showing a value of seven or higher, you flip the top three cards over, and you get to play one of them revealing, for free. Revealing. Now, the risk here is that if you hit Rise Again, <sighs> like you did, okay, you hit another Friends in High Places. Oh my gosh. So Rise Again's a five cost card. It's awesome. Middle of the game. But right now, not so good. Yeah. Keith wants Vader's fist. Can he get the, does he get the fist? Look at his face. Are we he's, taking a doctor's note home? Oh. Oh. oh, oh and he's oh. already got a Vader's <sighs> lightsaber out there. So he takes the chamber. So hey, you know what? Chamber. A zero cost meditation chamber on turn one? It's not horrible. That's fine by me. Well, no. you feel really good when you're I Ian. also, side note, 
how a probe this could just uh -oh. eat his hand alive. So, side note, I am so happy to see Meditation Chamber in a deck in the top four. That is a card. Oh, oh that is oh. exactly what Keith wanted so to have. So what Probe does is it allows you to look at two random cards in your opponent's hand at their events. They go bye-bye. And that's exactly what you want is to get rid of mitigation, which means your dice go unchecked. And that means Ian is going to have a pretty open turn right now. Yeah, and part of that is Doubt is so good against Snoke because Doubting yeah. a uh, the other character's dice, so Snoke can't power action, whatever that good thing is, mm -hmm. is excellent getting those dice off the table for zero. In this case, he has no money. So that yeah. was very clutch. I feel like if I'm... If I'm Keith here, I'm going to re-roll the four for one because I can't pay for the, the die. I think you just resolve the three first before you, you get you jumped. You take the damage. Right? Jumped? The, the, oh, he you get, you get, yeah. the force, force jump. jump. So That's absolutely correct. This is, a, this is a case of you needed to get that force jump out and spun to its side. Otherwise, he would have probed probably earlier, right? Maybe tried to get the friends in high places. Yeah, and so. you see Ian here. He, Ian's rocking all, all sorts of flashy stuff. So he's got the wooden character award from Covenant Masters playing Holocron here. He's <laughs> because got the, he's a champion. That's right, because he won. He got an acrylic one for making top six. He also has the acrylic, the gold shield you see there in the top left of the Snoke board. He's also got the gold damage there on the Tarkin and the gold resource at the top of the screen. Uh, and those resources and uh, shield and damage are you get just for showing up to Covenant Masters. So if you haven't checked out that event, it's two weeks from today. Uh, we still have some spots left, so check that out and sign up because those are going to be gone soon. Uh, and he's rolling in here. Did not get the special on uh, Holocron, but did get a focus, which means he can use Snoke's power action to deal a damage to Tarkin and resolve one of Tarkin's dice at plus two. So that Tarkin focus could easily turn into a three focus. But and the other thing is there's a resource there, right? And getting three resources <laughs> off of Snoke. Three round resources one. feels good. Yeah, that's yep, what it's gonna there do. it is. So gonna go ahead and take a damage on Tarkin. And Tarkin is just like such a usable character to him. Mm -hmm. I played against him in round one of the event and he just kept feeding Tarkin to the beast. It was so funny. Uh, and just trying to get as much out as he could. Fortunately, I was able to keep discarding his entire hand. <laughs> Which is what he was also doing with Tarkin. Assuming dice you, you right? did close quarters. Uh, close quarters. I all the dice in my deck also had discard sides. So oh, gross. Yeah. So, so when you're playing as Vader, Keith's in a bad spot here. Yeah. He's discarding a reroll here. I mean, those dice are basically going to get jumped. So well, yeah, and you've got four resources for removal. Like you're just you're yeah. hurting real bad here. Did not get great results there. He's going to blank it anyway, just so he can try to get the shield. So there it is. The wow. That's exactly what he wanted. Hey, Tarkin, you ready now, for a this, shield? This is a pretty awesome story, in my opinion, um, which is Keith Keith has a great story. Uh, he came in, he started playing with Eric, actually. Eric's here commentating with us. And uh, I, I would say, for a while, he played what I would say is very casually. Um, yes. He played with Eric. He didn't really enter, enter much stuff. And at some point, he got bit. He got bit <laughs> by the bug, and he, he went headfirst into Destiny. And I will e I'm pretty confident, I can confidently say this, this is easily his best tournament performance to date. That's great. I doubt he's ever made a cut, and I doubt he, I, he's barely played in any tournaments. Yeah. So he's making the cut. He's in the top four. I really would love to know um, what it's like to experience that for the first time again. <laughs> it's just been so long. I've been playing tournaments since I was 10. Yeah. Um, so like, I feel like this just has to be a wild experience for Keith. Yeah, and when we were out there and we were talking about, oh yeah, you're on stream, his eyes got real big. <laughs> Oh, Vader's fist coming out on the reverse end. Yeah. That's pretty important right now. Round. Because like you what said. What is happening here? So Ian played Vader's fist. So Keith was already like resetting Ready for, for the, the next round. round. And he's like, oh, and there's instead, one more thing. No, no, yeah. Ian, Ian had like six resources. Yeah. So he's going to get three activations out of this guy. Oh, my, my. Yeah, we're backing this up. No, I think um, he thought that the round was over, and yeah. it just wasn't clear that he was going to play Vader's Fist for one, two, and three. And he's putting one damage on Vader, probably thinking, hey, eventually I'll use my Meditation Chamber, which I don't think he used this round. And he really should. If he hasn't already used it, he should use he it. He already now. claimed. Yeah, he claimed out. Oh, he, he thought claimed. the round so was Ian, over. So Ian, yeah, yeah that's why. Because Ian had, sitting with one card and six money out there, he's like, I'm going to claim, and he started going the next round, and Ian's like, there's one more thing we got to do here. It's yeah. called Vader's it's, it's, called, <laughs> it's called a doctor's nose. And now, this this could have gone significantly worse. That is true. Um, for Keith. So, got the indirect damage there with uh, Vader's Fist. He's just dumping it onto Greedo. I assume we're going to see a big, big play if he gets Price of Failure here. Price of Failure is not in Keith's deck today. Are you... Serious America? He was worried about coercion, and uh, he found he was not using it as often as uh, 
he found it useful. So. Hey, Franco a has a question. great question. He says, haven't played Destiny in a while, and thanks for watching, Franco. Are there more competitive decks than just four? And the answer is absolutely. Um, we have already seen three here on the, the stream. Among the top eight, there were, I think, seven different decks happening. And then if you look at the various regional reports, I think iRebel does a great job of covering the regional season. Um, the spread is actually really incredible on what's possible. And I legitimately think, going to go ahead and start with Vader's Chamber here to get a card <laughs> and heal. But uh, I think that the game, in terms of deck diversity, is wider than it's ever been. Um, and I think there are so many decks out there. Even this uh, Snoke Tarkin deck didn't even get, quote-unquote, discovered until last week. That was the first time people started talking about it after it had an event. So I think there's a ton of room to explore. And if you're a competitive player, it's a really great time to be a competitive Destiny player. I'm oh, sure. yeah. There's also some fringe decks out there that, if you put the time into them, they can perform extremely well. I'm going to go ahead and get Greedo going in case he bites the bites dust. The dust. Well, did he now, roll a thing? Oh, he, he did. did. He got two damage there, I think. Well, Greedo has now paid for his points. <laughs> that's right. Because <laughs> if Greedo rolls anything, not a blank, you did get. The other thing I want to mention about the state of Destiny right now that's really cool is that one thing the design team seems to have been doing lately is making it so that the thematic teams can actually be paired together. Um, so you see, like, even Han Kira is a deck that we saw mm -hmm. making the cut and doing very well. Uh, but you just have a lot of these teams that, like, seem to go together. Obviously, these teams aren't exactly representing that, but it is something I'm very happy to see. And I think we'll continue seeing as the game goes on. And so looking forward to the next set and, and seeing how that continues to build on that. Oh, mind, mind trick. trick. What a huge play. That is a big one. Excellent. That is one of the cards I am most sad to see going in rotation. Yeah, isn't that, like, your favorite card? It, it, when people ask, that's usually... I, I haven't reassessed that in a few sets, but yes. Uh, the, basically, if you look at Ian's face right now... <laughs> feels bad. That's exactly why I love that card. It's the reverse game sacrifice. Yep. It's, yeah. just, it's just literally like, immediately, your, your opponent's brain hurts. Because <laughs> they're never ready to say, these are the, these, this is how I want to divide my dice for you. You can just get rid of either of them, and I'm fine. But so two, why don't we make good radio and tell people who don't know what it does? That's what right. Does. So mind trick, two cost... Um, and your opponent has to divide all the dice they have actively in the pool. And a great question. Mind trick, someone asking a mind trick, Jacob. <laughs> uh, so mind trick, your opponent divides all of their dice into two different piles. And then you get to pick one of those piles of dice to remove. So uh, Ian split his, his three dice over there, and, and Keith decided to remove the three that he did, including Holocron. What do you think is a really strong play? It was a good play, but the other thing is it did leave the Tarkin dice on the table, which means they can get snoked. So he had the opportunity to get rid of the, the weaker dice showing, but they are the. It would also take the Snoke power action off the table if you took the other three away. So I think that's wise, yeah, though, because Snoke's dice just have so much utility that he can make that Vader's fist real scary over true. and over and over. Yeah. But I mean, there's still a Snoke out there with a, fo a focus. And Tarkin's yes. not bad at focusing either. I mean, yeah. So. My, my trick is one of those really interesting cards that a really skilled player can use to give themselves a little bit of an edge, mm -hmm. even though they have to lose dice. It's just a really fantastically designed card. Did we just use Tarkin's power action maybe to do form know. direct? I mean, the wild reality of this, oh, no, he's just this game to is that Vader still has 15 health yep. and his meditation chamber to heal the damage every turn. So because he has Vader out, that also means that he's going to get a draw card from it for free every turn and put a card from his discard pile on the bottom of his deck. So the question here is, who do you kill first? I, I assume you go after Snoke. I nuke Tarkin. 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 So naturally, Snoke's going to be using his power action to damage Tarkin once to make his right. dice better. Um, and the moment you kill Tarkin, Snoke's ability isn't worth anything. So, right. Whereas and like Tarkin's ability late game is still incredible. Still very good. But the thing is, after the force jump came down, I might have reassessed that and thought that Snoke with that force jump is going to be a real pain. Because Snoke's going to just keep Vader offline for a long time. Looks right? like so. uh, Keith barring a little bit of Matt Phillips luck here. <laughs> called the hidden motive right on the... Fist and uh, Ian gonna roll back in gets shields. So what you're saying is we're five for five on hidden motive calls in the top eight I so mean, far. I mean, they are screen. just fire right now. It's um, almost as high as speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yes. To be, uh, <laughs> so. I'm gonna be honest. My hidden motives today were not working like that. <laughs> so on the downside for Keith, he has spent two rounds now, and basically he's. I mean, a meditation chamber and a saber isn't horrible, but really at this point. If he didn't get a ton of damage, which he hasn't had, you'd expect him to have ramped a little bit harder than this. And so he's had to spend on Mind Trick and other things like that. And he's got none of his Econ cards, right? We haven't seen a Truce or No Good to Be Dead out of him yet. To be fair, so. though, he still has yet to activate Vader, which is <laughs> true. And he has a resource. So I think Vader's good for a six or seven damage right this turn. And if Ian doesn't deal with Vader's lightsaber... That can be a big deal. Even, a lot of damage. even if Vader's lightsaber hits a two shield, 
and he doesn't deal with it, and then he can resolve evaded eye, get the two shields. Now, he's, it's funny, he's blanking both his dice here. <laughs> and this is amazing for two reasons. One, the card anger. Mm -hmm. So if he, if he has an anger, he can use anger to resolve one evaded dice against him. Then he can then power action with Tarkin to remove both to two dice showing the same symbol and it deal four indirect damage to his opponent. And I feel like Keith might have figured this out because the way he's looking at this is like, I have uh -oh. to roll in, but I can't roll in. Yeah, Tarkin's like my third favorite utility character for villains well, so behind like Unkar and Jabba. Keith, he's, he's so He's sitting flexible. on a doubt in his hand. Oh. And, and I think you definitely doubt one of these that Tarkins. Yeah, great absolutely. Play. Well, also, it gets Which rid so of his weird, option. Right? Like you were talking about the other thing, looking at their faces. This is a classic. Look yeah, at somebody. See, Keith, here he goes. Look, this is he's just solving the problem. Solving the problem. Way to go, Keith. Yep. All right, here we go. go. That's a great it, play. It tells such a great well, story. I mean, it's he's literally shutting down and gets a resource for that, right? So he's shutting down both the Tarkin play and the Anger, anger. play. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge. Which I don't even know if he knows about the he had Anger play. Another coming. force jump. Oof. A quirk says, you know it's getting serious. Taking off the glasses. <laughs> that's correct. Okay, so Tarkin getting the focus here. Going to be able to fix that Vader's fist die if he wants it. Um, it looks like Raider's Fist is on three disrupt, which means you can destroy three of your opponent's resources. Which might Keith be only has one, but that one could let him, when you resolve Vader's lightsaber, and it's on Vader, you can pay one to roll Vader's character die back in and do a damage to a character. So uh, while the Fist might not do any damage, it might prevent a lot of it. Yep. Sometimes I think disrupt Keith has removal. Oh, Darksaber. That is... That's that a scary play. Interesting. All that, right. You know, with the three disrupt shown on the Fist, I kind of like that. Hmm. So he's got it's a, got a three focus side. It's got a multi discard side. Mm -hmm. It's got a three or a four and a five damage. And four what exactly does that card do? That's right. Thank you, Sugi, for reminding us. Uh, Dark Saber there is a four cost upgrade. Um, if it's on a twenty point or a greater character, which Vader is, it gets plus two to all of its sides. Which gets pretty nutty when you start those values already printed. Yeah. All right, what did we get here? All right, it so also has redeploy in case, but in this case, <laughs> it's probably not going to be He got the shield, so it's a three shield. He also got the four for one on Vader, and it looks like a two or a three on the other Vader. Man, does. three shields on Vader is no joke. It's an 18 health monster. I would not be upset about that. Especially if they're going to be doing indirect damage that you can... Do you ever find yourself sitting somewhere, doing live commentary on the top four for a regional, watching... Oh, I am your father. So Keith either loses his hand or lets Ian resolve that three <laughs> against Vader. And I'm going to be honest. Lose your hand. I think you absolutely, with only two cards left, lose your hand. Mm -hmm. That's going to stop Vader's four for one from turning into anything serious. But you're still going to get three damage with Vader and shield. And shields aren't horrible. Yeah. Right? I mean, this looks like it's going to be a long game. Especially with shields in the chamber. No. It's like... Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, on the other side, there's Vader's Fist. So the long game isn't exactly where you want to be going. Yeah, but 18 health Vader's now, not. This, mm -hmm. this, though is precisely the reason you might wait to play use Vader's Meditation Chamber in a turn. Mm -hmm. Because if you discard your hand, you can draw a card with mm -hmm. Vader's Chamber. Yeah. 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 So the, this little play is, like, uh, again, I, I see so many players blaming games on one or two little decision points. And even just that little thing is probably something a lot of players wouldn't catch. Um, but that could make a huge difference, right? If Keith discarded his hand here and still got to draw mm -hmm. and reroll one, I, I'm not even and, sure. And we don't lose that with his hand. Like, if he had no mitigation and, like, he really needed to be in the round, he's taking the damage. He's keeping the cards in his hand. So I'm curious what he has now, that he to values. Be, to be fair, right, now it gives him, he can heal with Meditation Chamber. No, he's already used but it. He's, no, he's used I'm it. saying next round. Okay. Yeah. He's got damage to automatically do sure. it with. Mm -hmm. And the max damage here showing on the other two dice is pretty high. That's true. With two, two rerolls to do it. And maybe he's feeling like he wants to work Tarkin in, right? Yeah. All right, he's discarding to reroll. I, don't know, I like those shields a lot. I, I was fine with how it sat as well. What did he? Ooh. He got a blank and looks like a discard or a shield. Mm, as a resident mill player in the room, I don't like the discard, but still the shields would be a little bit more. All right, better. he's focusing the fist die into Two. three damage here. All right, keep your guns. Now here's the real yeah, question. That, see, those shields would have been nice right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. He's got What's to discard his other hand? card and try it again. I'm pretty sure he's discarding whatever it is. You can't keep those two dice, or those, those two sides. He's looking at his discard pile. Once again, I know a lot of people think mill and discard's not super good, but the reality is anything in Ian's hand right now is probably legitimately useful, and removing them and keeping the card in your hand, that if you value it, might be worth your time. 
you'd have to value it really highly at this point. It, it to, depends on what it is. But I mean, you, so you re I think you re-roll Vader's dice for sure. You could make a case for maybe doing the discard, but at this point, he I think he kind of already went in on the let's. Oh, he might be playing this card. I, mean, I, do, I don't disagree with going for damage because yeah, okay. uh, you need to. It's a damage okay. race. It was Mel, so he just he got rid of all. There's of the anger that okay, we all see. knew he played around. So. I mean, the interesting part of getting rid of the hand there, right, is like. He's going to claim. What's yeah. Ian going to do at this point? So, unless that card is something insane, it seems maybe, like... Maybe he'll flip it over, we can see it, because you never know, it could be a fist. Watch him just discard it. That would be funny. Because if it's a fist, like that's a legitimate game changer right there. All right, so he's keeping it. It's the top card in his hand still, so I'm dying to know what that uh, Yes, that's, to that's what I'm interested in, too. Because it was good enough for... Uh, well, he, he not only let him resolve damage against him, but he didn't re-roll with it. So there's, there's a trick in his hand he's trying to save. Yeah, because he could have easily, right? I mean, if he just discarded his hand, he hits for three. Hits for three, shields. He gets three right. shields. Mm -hmm. So then he's literally at none damage right now. Because mm -hmm. he let Ian resolve that die. Yep. So that he could discard Ian's hand. I mean, Ian would have still gotten the three. Oh, yeah, none because of the shields. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. He would yeah, be, he would be at zero. So that card has cost him quite a bit here. And it would have been an extra three damage on Tarkin. So the question is, what is it? And, I mean, also, if he had rolled into something more useful than what he rolled, we might be having a different story here, right? But Right. Okay, so he is getting his money. So he, I'm betting it's the fist, then. And he's getting up to five. I, to I, the fist down. I would wager it's the fist. I mean, I can't think there's, of anything I else. Can't, I can't, there's, unlike, I mean, like, it's a dark presence. So, or, I'm sorry, uh, what's the, uh, he heals five and he puts a card from his graveyard. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's Dark ritual? Actually, that, uh, dark rise, rise Again. Rise Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's also a, uh, very possible thing. Jim Sharp says it's a fifth, so we'll see if Jim's right here. There's that fifth resource. All right, he's he's stacking them up. Let's see what we get here. It's a big play. It's whatever it is. Yep, it's a fist. It's a fist. And can you blame him if you've got I, a fist? I think I heard Ian say rise again, question mark, which uh, so Ian was also on a, it's one of the five costs that's real good. But it swings so heavily. It does. If you give him an upgrade and five health. So now like, they've both got fists. <laughs> Maybe but we behind have, on that race, but he does. But we get have to. Vader to flip it in whatever you want mm -hmm. after you roll. Now that's very important. I, a lot of people have made the mistake of rolling in or just playing the die on whatever side they want, mm -hmm. and you actually have to, as a power action, roll the die. Then you have to flip it, so you don't just get to go. Okay, I want this side. Yep, and it only makes a difference if it hits the side you actually want, but right. that does happen once in a while. Mm -hmm. so. All right, let's see if Vader can get something nutty here. I, I feel like. If he can roll shield and some damage, that'd be really good right oh now. Oh boy! So Ian is asking for a number of cards in Keith's hands because you know, as a Tarkin player is, he's always eyeing getting all the options out of his hand. So we're sitting on that money again, uh, two stick and the four for one stick. No, with no resources available. So I feel like you take the money from the saber to get three, because that way you can pay for whatever you roll out on the fist, and you can pay for that four for one. Just start throwing some damage out because right now. Well, also, if he has any type of mitigation, he might need to do that soon because we're talking. We're down to where he has only six hit points, and that uh, indirect damage from Tarkin's side is going to add up real fast. And, and the, other, a, the other thing is, you can't overcommit all the damage in a Greedo. Well, so here's your problem. One. That's a Tarkin discard, so that's going to be snoked, and uh, Keith can have no hand. So, what you see is what you get. Well, he does have the chamber. You're right. The, your point from last round. Perhaps and that's why chambers. Very why the chamber is really good right now. Mm -hmm. I swear I wrote that card off more than you would know, but I do. It is a nice little uh, friends in high places play. I think chamber is really neat because it just gives you a little extra reach when you need it. Well, it's like what's the value of? I think the main reason it's in this deck is probably for the mill matchup because you know that has been maybe not prevalent, but there's been some good successes in the last couple of weeks with. Oh boy, uh, you know rolls poo poos. Yep. So Vito, Greedo rolls a blank, and now we got... Take the money. What is happening here? So you have $3 coming out of Darksaber. But what did Tarkin's die do? Discarded it discarded three? four cards. Or yeah. three cards? Yeah. Because yeah. he snoped it. Plus two, yeah. He snoped. All right. So we uh, did uh, whatever the presence card is for the Strider Story on the bottom of the screen. Imposing presence on the, the yep. Vader's fist die. If he has zero cards, so there, if he had used the Meditation Chamber a second ago, he couldn't have gotten both dice. So. Okay, so Meditation Chamber, going to get to draw a card and heal the damage, and put a card from the discard pile on the bottom of his deck. Also a good card against Mill. Hate that card. Passionately. You can just get rid of it with uh, that Vandalizer. I do. Oh, I do. Or Flames of the Past. Uh, 
All right, snow coming in. What have we got here? Disrupts? We got the special on the jump and pair disrupts, yeah. Feels bad when you need money to deal damage. Now Tarkin is down to... How did Tarkin get down to just two damage here? Uh, th yeah, there was no good to me dead. Mm. He, he actually healed Tarkin in order to get the money for to play Fist at the beginning of this round. Okay, yeah. I missed that. There comes Fist. And he's doing the smart thing. You activate. You can use a power action if it's already in the pool to change it, but obviously he's going to get a resolve it and do it again. All right. That's a pair of disrupt, right? Oh, no. Now it, oh, he, indirect, he did the indirect, indirect for power before. action yep. from... Okay. And that means Greedo's going away. And not, Fader not getting takes a resolve to die in the pool or two. roll in a resolve. Alright, so we're at 11 damage. There's only 4 left, so this is one Tarkin power action. Come on, Greedo. Give him some damage here. He can't. It was already in the pool, right? That's blank. Yeah. Greedo oh, it was. I didn't, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and the Fist takes Greedo's spot as the sidekick for uh, Vader now. I would prefer the Fist as my yeah. sidekick a couple, to Greedo. A couple, uh, I don't think anyone Greedo. would be mad if a Fist just showed up randomly. <laughs> All right, so it's this an is, infinite health this damage This is not dealer. looking good for Keith. And I think if you go back to the play where he took six damage instead of canceling it all, essentially, mm -hmm. I think that's the difference maker. In that same turn, if he hadn't used the chamber until after his hand was gone, I think he is in his chance to rule. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing was he just had some really bad luck early game doing the double friends and tie for not A much chamber. gain. Yeah. But still, I mean, still getting five resources of stuff into play turn one and that not being that great. Feels why this Vader deck is so good. Right, the floor, I mean... <clears throat> and that's kind of the thing about Vader. Like, when it hits hard, like, you, you feel that punch. All Sometimes right. it doesn't... Right. calling that game. Go to game two. I think that's wise, because you, this is probably going to be a bit of a little slugfest. Yeah, so we are tw about 25 minutes into the stream, which means that game probably is 23, 24 minutes. You only have an hour and a half, right? Yep. So it's about 30 minutes per game, and you really can't afford to waste any time. Yep. Okay, well, we're going to reset. The loser, it says the best of three. We're in the top four. Winners are going to go to the finals. Ian won game one, so Keith's looking for two in a row here. And the loser gets to pick the battlefield, so I assume we'll be going right back to Keith's Thied Palace. Yep. Wait, what? Thied? <laughs> Thied, yep. He's going to see his beloved in her final resting place. <laughs> Don't that's you know, Obi-Wan turned her against him. That's right. That's some of my favorite fan art is when you see Vader uh, mourning the Padme uh, burial side. I don't know if you've ever seen some of that fan it's, art. It's pretty deep. It's just like, woo. All right, what, so what, what does the prequels might have been. Yeah. All right, so, so we're cutting Keith, here. Keith needs some heavy punching real quick. I, so, think, I, mean, I, mean, I think his round one was exactly what he wanted. He theated into a Darth Vader's lightsaber. He got a uh, Friends in High Places off. I mean, that's... And then from there, and then we it went downhill. Ian uh, got his stuff going. Obviously, yeah. the force jump was good. And, and then like the last time I went to Waffle House, I do, I do. That's funny. I think, I do think there are things Keith could have done there um, to give himself a much better mm -hmm. chance. I agree. But even then, it's like he, he in round one, he had exactly what he wanted, mm -hmm. and uh, it just didn't, didn't work its way out. Um, and that's that's why a, a lot of times. Um, it's. I'll answer your question in a second, Jim. Uh, that's why a lot of times it's uh, like. That friends and high on turn one, especially with rise again, it's like if he had had like because by the end of that round he had damage on him from Vader's fist, right? Mm -hmm. He had a bunch of damage with Greedo happening, and so technically speaking, right? It's like if that had for somehow waited, uh, that's a, just a much. Sure. I, I feel like obviously you got to go for it because yeah. you hit Vader's fist, it's just game over. Sure. And, uh, I mean, Ian's a great player. We've played with him a lot, and he's great. And we saw his maestro ability of manipulating his dice and uh, getting max value out of all his stuff this entire game. But I would say probably the play of that game was probably when uh, Keith went into the tank and went and doubted the blank Tarkin dice. I think that was the highlight of this game. And, uh, Absolutely. And him to do that. That, that was and a I would great say play. That was a pro six play. Months away, six months ago, there's no way he sees it or thinks about it. And yep. stuff. So and I mean, that's, I'm, yeah, I'm so it's proud very of him. Intuitive. I'm so proud of him for making it this far. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim Sharp asking, can he buy the wooden character boards and the black TC playmat? So yes and no, or no and yes, actually. Uh, <laughs> but you don't can't, tell them which. You can't buy the wooden boards. The wooden boards are exclusively champion boards from the Covenant Master Series. The finale for that's happening in two weeks. Uh, everyone that shows up are going to get the resources G on the top la top of uh, Ian's playmat there, the gold and black ones. The shields that are on Tarkin right now and some damage that are also black and gold will also be given away. A lot of those blue boards that you see and the wooden boards that you're playing. So, Jim, uh, show up. Uh, looks like we have a funny link there. 
Show up to the Covenant Masters finals in two weeks, and uh, you'll have a chance Saber? to get them. Went is to it four. a jackal? It's gotta be. Yep. Just going to go ahead and get the Dark Saber. That's a pretty solid play, especially if friends I have a cool places story about there. your playmats, actually. I got the white one, the old, old, old one. I yeah. used it at my wedding as the, um, what do you sign your... Uh, guest book. Yeah, it's a guest book. That's amazing. So, I didn't know that. Can you yeah. send a picture of that to me? I sure can. That's amazing. So uh, as far as the playmats, we've been getting a lot of requests for that. If that's something you'd actually be interested in buying, uh, post in the comments. I'd love to know. Uh, that's something we're heavily considering. You just have to order a, a decent amount of them to order them at all. And uh, last time we had a, that exact play mat that we've been playing on, a fat stack uh, for a long time. And then we started streaming with them, and everyone's asking about them, which is really <laughs> funny. Um, they make good guest books, too. All right, two zero cost upgrades. I mean, the chance cube's not exactly zero cost. You've got to pay one to roll it in. But that's one of the things that Tarkin really likes to see is a lot of dice that, I mean, they have good sides, but they can also just be used as fodder for his power action. Absolutely. Well, and Tarkin's just... Tarkin is a value town, man. It's like, is it a blank? Cool, I can use it. Is it a symbol? I can also use it, too. Yeah, he's good at using everything. Every every piece, right? Just like in the film when he did to poor... Uh, what's his face? Who, yeah, yeah. No one remembers him. Krennic? Yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Kiefer, to your point, yes. The, the, there are versions of those character boards for sale on our website. They're called Saga Boards. They're black with a white fill. <laughs> do uh, it. They look really... Yeah, do it. Buy it. They, uh, they look great. Um, and I'm uh, once you start playing with them, I feel like it's really hard to go back, even though... Uh, I need to my, borrow some, because... My champion to my left, Eric, <laughs> ousted his for some cards. Yeah, I'm, I'm a magic guy, so like having those big boards feels weird, but I've never played a full game, so I need to like try it and see if I get the fix. But yeah. I feel like right now Vader is uh, he's in a really good place. He's got the weapon he needs. He's got the threats he needs. Now, of course, you've got Chance Cube and Holocron. Yeah. And although they are highly inexpensive dice because of Tarkin's insane Walmart powers to just make anything out of nothing, like Snoke and Tarkin still have a lot of tools to play with. Oh, yeah. I think, I think both these people have a start that they want. So this is going to be a game that did, you know, sometimes you just get crap first hands and you're just like, like yeah I pretty much knew I was going to lose that I like the uh, support here from Donovan on camera <laughs> that's uh, the young Wainwright in the making and uh, he, he was one game well. out of the cut today which is pretty crazy really what place uh, was he he got four and three I, I don't know what, what uh, place he did uh, so I will say Seth saying he participated in the tournament today great job for hosting uh, thank you so much for coming glad to have you here thanks for the compliments as well uh, shout out to Grant for running a smooth show today as well. He's been working really hard all day, and uh, it's uh, appreciated from everyone here, especially me. Yeah. So, with that being said, come and hang out in February where we're just going to goof off and play games. Yep. Again, just plug, chill. plug, plug. Just kidding. Um, all right, so what's going on in the game here? Flipping. He's going to start flipping into threats. He's probably going to start pressuring either hand or damage because he's got blanks on chance cube, which... You can either focus into money, or you can start using Tarkin to create threats that you know Vader's really going to have to deal with. And if you can early roll some significant damage and just punch Tarkin in the face, I think that's how Vader's going to win this game. Because last game, hilariously, most of the damage on Tarkin came from Snoke of all places. Yeah, and that doesn't feel good. I mean, there wasn't a ton of damage that happened, and that was really the. the Problem of the game, right? So Keith is re-rolling those dice, but not the focus. I mean, because what's that for? Focus. I feel like if you're not going to re-roll the focus, you may as well use, use the focus. focus yeah. So and, and now Targan didn't have the discard showing, right? So I think that's pretty smart, actually. Mm, okay, he's but I get it done anyway. I almost think you just go ahead and use it, mm -hmm. and then I think they're talking about that too. <laughs> because, because now he didn't have power action; he just got to use the discard naturally. Yeah. Three. Three, three, three. And the two from Greedo, I assume. Oh. Blank. Walking it back. Forward, backward, left, right. Well, at least we'll see Greedo do something here. That's Maybe. A good thing. I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Edit undid. All right, going back. Here we go. Three focus, because it's got plus two, because it's on Vader. Damage to the face. Wombo combo. So, in here on two resources, if he has anything like anger, anger. it's pretty good. Oh. He's going to get a resolve one of Vader's dice against Vader. And then he's going to turn those two blanks on those zero cost upgrades <laughs> into four damage. <laughs> or he but might focus the chance of giving the money if he's like got another Vader's fist or something like that that he wants to. And he has a power action Tarkin, so he could make 
what, six well, bucks this Tarkin turn? here can make three bucks by himself, which is enough to get that fist on the table. And then you focus with Tarkin into the three on the chance cube. All right, Keith here, okay, just putting the uh, force lead on, on Snoke. Now, Keith deciding to do damage to Snoke. See. Which I, I just think is actually the wrong choice. There are two shields on Tarkin, so if you're trying to just power one of them down, but yes. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, again, once you get Sno uh, Tarkin off the board, the game is inevitably over unless they have a bunch of cards in play yeah, to and, do something about it. And the cards that he has, obviously, we've got oh, the fist. He, that we oh, he, yeah, he force hit him for force solution. Yeah, and we see one Vader's fist hit in Ian's discard pile. That feels good. Yep, two indirect damage here from Snoke. See, Greedo, take two damage. We aren't running uh, a TIE Fighters or anything. There's a handheld cannon and a force wave are the other big hitters in Ian's desk. That exactly. Leia's cannon is pretty, pretty powerful. Yep. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it does, it's cheap. It does reduce one of the slots on your character, so you go from three to two. Uh, but the damage output on that die is just nutty, yeah. so you don't care. It's a th it's a three cost upgrade on a two cost upgrade. Yeah, it's 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 a three cost die for two resources, yeah, right. and Sorry. especially with the ability, you have so much focus between the Snoke and Thrawn, or I'm sorry, um, Tarkin and Snoke. Like you're gonna hit what you need, so inevitably. It would be really nice if Vader can get one more upgrade and just start rolling into... If he's picking Snoke, Snoke. Mm -hmm. But if he just gets a nutty roll and goes, okay, Tarkin, here's like 10. So Have I think, fun. I think the best case scenario here for Keith, he's going to get a third money. Um, ideally, you may probably see a second blade to put down on Vader. Um, and then you roll in, you get seven or more, you have friends in high places, but you, you nail straight into a Vader's fist. So wouldn't you, I mean, maybe get Greedo in? and just get the value out of him first, since he's sitting at the six. Sure. Or there's no direct damage on the other side of the table, so you can Just wait. do it when you want. Maybe. I yeah. think the, the good thing for the Vader player is like, he has thieves who so can keep producing resources, but the problem is he is getting outpaced because of Snoke. Well, and, and he I needs think to deal with that quickly. The other, the other part of this is like, assuming he has another blade to put down on Vader, not only do you threaten and you force them to play their control cards, um, Ian's on six money, so he's he, he's in Vader's fist territory. Um, now it looks like he's overriding. Okay, he's just activating. If he can get lethal showing on Snoke, he's going to force Ian to deal with it. And Vader has that powerful power action, put him back into the pool. And it looks like he got a two or three stick and a two or a three on. All right, overconfidence. Oh, overconfidence. All right, so we're going to see that power action from Vader. Now Keith really wants the Vader die to come up low. Ah, uh, yep. I did not. So they can roll in. And the, yeah, the dark saber, the plus two is on resolve, or is it while it's in the pool? I guess while it's in the pool. It's huh, but it looks like Vader rolled a three. Rolled so a that's, three. That's so yeah, they're tie. even. So we got to choose. Yeah, that's fair. Tommy on the stream saying you got to roll Vader in to play around anger. Uh, you don't want that to happen again. So if you can get Vader out and resolve, then obviously anger is much less of a threat. Look at Keith here, debating. I really do love being able to see the players and to see them kind of like really puzzling it out and trying to figure out the best moves. Obviously, if, if you're so Keith, what are you looking for in your hand right now? Since you've already rolled Vader out, some of your mitigation, I guess. Keith decided to go third money and then immediately Ian rolls in Tarkin. Gets a two focus, which Snoke can turn into a four. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I, f I feel like, so this is best of three, this is game two. Keith lost the first round. Ian needs to win one to go to the finals. Keith needs to win two. And you can tell if you just like watch the body language of this. As this is going on, Ian's getting more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Keith's trying to set up more, tapping his cards more, um, playing Force Illusion more. All right, here comes Snow. This would be an ideal time for a mind trick, which we saw in mind the last Mind trick's game. good. The other one is if you can do some damage and maybe rise again beginning of next round. Oh, hey, look, he rolled something on the chance cube. That must feel good. You're yep. asking for an update on the Chewy match, and uh, the note is Tim is up one game. And so the uh, the other Vader, Greedo, is ahead one game against the uh, Yoda, Yoda Chewy. Yoda Chewy, which is built to be better. There's a mind trick. So we're going to have half the dice again. Look at Ian's face. Like, mind trick, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, when you play factor fiction, don't be, well, when you play mind trick, any, any card that forces your opponent to make a big decision, mm -hmm. it feels real bad. And... Tarkin loves to use every one of his dice, so here you're taking three of them away. It really removes a lot of his options. Yeah, especially because, I mean, I assume Ian wants to get a big, 
like Invader's Fist out, right? He's not doing that much. He doesn't have that much damage showing. He's obviously got the Tarkin power action. Remove two dice showing the same symbol to do four. And he's got some indirect that is possible. But I think, you know, if he can get a fist down this turn kind of a thing. Gonna, you know, I was going to say, don't do not do a two for four. Like, that's he, just bad well, split. I mean, if he's got anger in his hand. It's dangerous, though. It is dangerous, but I mean, also, you force Keith to think. Because I mean, here's the thing, though. Tarkin, yeah, Tarkin wins games I by amount of dice. Earlier, on Keith removed two dice showing blanks with a mind trick and something else. I wonder if he was intentionally playing around anger at that point. Mm-hmm. Probably. Because I wasn't even thinking about anger, because I, I, I hadn't seen it. Um, anger feels real bad against Vader. That's really good. Uh, looks like CJ asking for the updates on Chewie, and we just said that uh, Chewie's down one match down against, one what's zero. the other deck? Uh, Vader. Vader Greedo. So we got two Vader Greedos in the top four. Mm-hmm. Two, there were only two in the top eight. It's a very good deck. It, it's very forgiving. Look, Keith throwing the glasses down. <laughs> here we go. It's a big moment, right? I mean, I, 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 the game, the round, probably hinges right here. What, what are we looking at? We're looking at two blanks and a chance cube, which means power action out of Tarkin for damage. Or and maybe anger. The question is, if, if, if Keith, if Ian has anger in his hand, I think that's what Keith's debating right now. If anger's there, it's probably right to take away those blanks. And what does anger do? Who might not know? So you have to have two blanks showing on your own dice in order to do it. It's a zero cost thing that lets you resolve one of your opponent's dice, so it gets it off the table and does whatever it does, which is just brutal. But the requirement of having two blanks is a real requirement. I, uh, no, somebody in this room has tried real hard to make decks where you can get two of your own blanks down, so you can use that efficiently, and it's not easy. That's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was saying that's not I me. Love, I, love I love the blank manipulation. Ian back up to six. He's. I, I just. Uh, anytime I see my opponent at five or more money, I just think about Vader's fist. You know what's really crazy is Ian has gotten so comfortable. He may or may not have the anger, and it just doesn't matter because he's not telling. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah. Keith has to respect the fact that he may not have it, but he can't risk it. Right. And I think that's just, you can see it on their, on the players' faces, like you were saying earlier. Like, Ian's just kind of like, bro, what you going to do? And Keith's <laughs> like, crap, bro. I don't know, man. And <laughs> well, you can see how he's playing. He's being very ginger. He's playing wisely, trying to make sure he doesn't set himself up to just take a big punch in the face. And um, that's the son of a good player. Hey, Greedo getting some, some play there. All right, we've got a probe. A probe, which was great, a turning point last game, card. too. Going to get a look at two random cards in Keith's hand and discard any events that we see. Thanks for joining, Quirk. It was great having you here, man. Yeah, Quirk, thank you so much for the uh, the kind words. we got a chamber there. That's pretty nice. On a hidden motive. Uh, happy to have you on, and thank you so much for, for the kind words. Yeah, watch the recast. See what happens next week on Team Covenant. Uh, yeah, you, you said not interested in Destiny. That's totally fine. Uh, we sh- I think we're streaming Key Forge on Monday, if that's something you're into. So we'll see you there at 4 p.m. Central Time. Oh, I need to pick up some tokens for that, speaking of which. Remind me before I leave. I will try. Okay. So, did Greedo actually roll something? Because, once again, Greedo rolling things is good. It looks like you got to disrupt. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell I'd, from here. I'd still take it. I would, too. Oh, yeah. No, Anything that's, that's not a blank is value from Greedo. That is correct. I, I know people might think it's not damage, but it's not a blank, either. The other thing is, you did have the hidden motive before it got pulled there, and you wonder if uh, maybe hidden motive in one of those two blanks would have been... Yeah, to get to Tarkin's power action mm-hmm. not on and also to turn anger off. But I doubt he was actively thinking about Probe. That's true. So maybe he was waiting for that. But I mean, even without Probe. Probe is an amazing card. And what it does is it allows you to look at two random cards in your opponent's hand. And if those are events, you can strip them out to the graveyard. And boy, uh, getting rid of removal from Vader Truce is just for nasty. Dollar? What are you doing that's, for a buck? That's fine ish. Truce to reroll? I don't know about this. Yeah, I'm not sure you need to do I feel the like truce. you roll first, yeah. then you truce. Yeah, because then we got. Because now you're uh, telegraphing. And there's no cards, so. No cards. Imposing defense. And that means imposing presence removes two dice instead of one. And you can't roll back in. So you claim. Yeah, <laughs> well, so, you use so, Greedo. So that resource. Imposing presence has been an all star these two games. Like. Well, especially with Tarkin, right? I mean, essentially, mm-hmm. this deck is finding ways to make abundant use out of mediocre cards. Mm-hmm. So anger usually not that great, uh, but this deck has focus to turn to blanks to play anger, and then it turns those blanks into four damage to target's power action. And then Imposing Presence is a solid control card. It's one to remove a die if they have three or less cards. If they have zero cards, though, it removes two. So with Tarkin, if you roll a two discard, you power action with Snoke, make it a four discard, and they don't have any cards. When that happens, one for two is pretty amazing, especially if they don't have any cards for reroll. 
they roll out, you take away their highest value dice, and you basically just kill their turn. And this is what's really exciting about Destiny, is there's been you know people who say that the game is just highly aggro and mid-range, but we're seeing right now that control decks have a lot of viability. Now, the player has to pilot it well and set the parameters up to work, but like watching this is really fun because you're seeing two completely different paradigms of Destiny. One that is very passive and controlling, and one that is very aggressive, and they're butting heads, and it's just so unique, mm -hmm. and it's well played. Well, I, I agree, we're calling control decks fine, but I mean, and indirect isn't the most aggressive because you're not knocking people off the board, mm -hmm. but that damage can add up real quick. Oh, I, yeah. I've seen 12 damage out of the deck round one, so. Oh yeah, oh, it, there's it, the fist. Being but like it can, it can shift gears so so flexibly, and that's what that's really true. makes it neat yeah. to watch. It's, it's a deck with some answers as opposed to some decks are just. Looks like you got that three disrupt, which is pretty powerful given that Keith is on three resources. Yeah. Here. Oh. Vader's fist. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I mean, Vader's it's, saber. It's, it's time for Vader to to show us yes. all his boss. It would be really swell if he just rolls all the numbers, and you know, Ian just has to deal with it. Well, ideally, Ian won't have control cards, but that's something I feel like he's had pretty much every hand yeah. every time we've seen him play mm -hmm. here. And the, the other weird thing is we haven't actually seen Vader roll some gross numbers yet. Not yet. I'm waiting. Well, his, his opening roll in the first game where he got up to Friends High Places I mean, was good. But we after did, that, though. Yeah. So, like, and in the last round, you know, Keith had on seven damage, but Ian was just able to control both the what dice. What are we seeing mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. Resources. Like I we think it was a plus four. A plus, so that's really good. A and six total? Even the resources showing, he's got a Thede Palace, so Keith's going to be able to Thede. He can resolve for damage, pay one, roll the Vader die back in, unless <laughs> unless Ian does something about it. Now, Here's the first so, time we've seen Ian have to think about it, which is good. Yep, so we have I Am Your Father, um, and he's doing that on the Vader die. What does that card do? You either have to discard your hand or let your opponent resolve that die against you. I was, I was playing that card in my Vader deck in Dallas, and I think that is a great call in a meta where you expect a lot of Vader, and there's two in, out of the top four. So Ian has made some really good choices here. So he... Accepted the two damage. I hope he's at least discarding to roll that back in, probably, right? Yes. Yes. He needs to. I would hope so. And I think that's absolutely the right call, right? Because okay. um, you're going to roll. Oh, no, 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 rolling. no, no, no. Power action. Power action. Oh, oh, my word. oh no, no, no. Because Ian is on no. zero damage or zero no. resources here. No. Ah, that's just, oh. this is painful. And that's something that can happen when you played, what is this, round 12? Yeah. Like, it's, it's been a long day. All right, did he, so get he did damage? get damage with Greedo, but he did not get damage with Vader no or Six. Yeah, yeah. And what are we looking at here? It looks like a special on... A focus, a special. Cron? A focus, focus and a discard. Oh. Which that uh, That's not discard good. is going to knock out the rest of his hand. So this is probably Keith's last reroll. He needs to... Oh, needs it's to die was resolved, not removed. Oh, That's okay, fine. So he can't power action with Vader there. Yeah. Thank you. I feel so, way better. Yeah. Here's, here's well, the There's a reason thing. we're sitting here and Keith's over there playing. <laughs> <laughs> so the power action from Snoke is you can deal a damage to a different character and increase the value of a die by two. So Their character dice. Yeah, their character dice by two. So if you have Thrawn, or it, well, you know, back in the day it was Thrawn, but now you have um, Tarkin with a one discard, you can take a damage and that's three discard, which means the he Vader players... He's saving his hand. Okay, okay. smart, very smart. Oh, there's Minion watching. Hey, shout-outs, man. <laughs> okay, so uh, Ian focuses the fist here to a three. Um, probably just going to resolve against Vader and roll in. Um, did we play? He played the fist this turn, so he's got two more rolls in. That's correct. <sighs> it's getting dicey. And again, if we're on, this is around two or three? Three? I guess around three? Yeah, and it's like three or four. It's Vader has dealt two damage. I Actually, I, I think that was Greedo. Believe it or not. Well, the Vader's deck has dealt. <laughs> two, there's two damage on the board, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> and I'd be curious, does, does Keith have four speed in his, his deck? Keith does not have four speed on his deck. So I feel like both in terms of getting the battlefield and potentially, okay, he got, this is great. If, Here we go. If Ian, I don't think Ian has removal, so Ian does three. We have three resources showing on Darksaber. Mm -hmm. We have a four for one on Vader with his plus three on the lightsaber, so that's seven. Plus, he can roll back in the Vader's Dive. He pays one and deal the damage. So we are looking at potentially enough damage to kill Snoke or Tarkin, even. And as an update on the other top four event, uh, Yoda and Chewie were able to take game two. So they're split 1-1. One, one, right, I see Matt game. taking a break here. So they're split. 
They split. Mm -hmm. Going to game three, which is epic. I'm glad that's the case. Um, I am curious to see what ends up making this finals here. Going to do it. All right, so we're finally getting the action here. He did Thede instead of Darksaber. So now he can resolve it, but he can't roll it back in. Using the Force Illusion on Snoke. I almost think you, with seven, with a plus modifier, you have to lay that in. I have to target. put it where it actually does damage, yeah. Unless he's going for mill. <laughs> Thumbs so up from Sugi. So, uh, although it's not viable. Now, the other way that I think this could turn favorably in Key's favor, right? He rolls some damage here on the Saber. We'll go to the next round. Um, and then he can hit friends in high mm -hmm. for, <gasps> for a fist. A rise again. Now, I w oh. that's why I also right there would have maybe resolved... So that you're set up for the rise again. Because we haven't seen any That yet. was the last card oh, in his he, hand. He takes another three in. And he rolled focus? into focus. Mm. So he's at 9, 10, 11. And he's going to claim. And that's just not good enough, right? And a power action. What do we get here? Shields. That seems like a thing you want. And Snoke hasn't even activated yet? Nope. Are you serious, America? <laughs> Ian, Ian plays very slow. Now, He's methodical, yep. I he will he say, wants you to play into his trap. If I'm thinking about the other match, if, if Matt can actually pull out the win with Yoda Chewie, I feel like Matt against either of these decks would have a pretty good time. I agree. Because he can manipulate the Tarkin Snoke dice into not matching sides to prevent the Tarkin ability. Um, While dealing damage at the same time. But Chewie can only spin into the damage side, so there's limitations there. But, but yes. Spin into that two indirect is fine, especially mm -hmm. with the shields being generated from Yoda. All right. Looks like we got some rerolls coming. He's not rerolling Snoke, though. Power action was there, so that's mm. the four damage. Mm -hmm. See you later, Greedo. So he's going to roll Greedo in for a. Make a sure free he remembers roll. that trigger. Because some people He's don't. reading it. Yeah, that's good. Very carefully. Rolling it in. Looking for the right, two. All right, Greedo. Got two interacts. All right, all right, boy. You did good. Good job, Greedo. He has doubled Greedo. his damage output. This game. <laughs> good guy, Greedo. See, and this this is a this is a sign, right? He Ian literally just dumped the damage on Snoke. Mm -hmm. That's how much. I mean, Ian is huh? leaning into the damage. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Vader you put has one on Snoke and one, one on the shield left. on Tarkin. I think. Yeah, but I mean, he is okay with okay, Snoke, with Snoke going, down. going down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because like. You said Thrawn is the damage dealer. Snoke is just the enabler. Mm -hmm. Tarkin. Uh, Tarkin, but yes. Or Tarkin. I, I, yeah. I Tarkin also has both uh, holocrons at this point. Right. So I think you My need to roll into the money Thrawn. and get a rise again. I think that's the only out at this point. Because I can't even imagine what the dice rolls on the inside that don't have any things that match and don't do damage would be. <laughs> now, technically, uh, Vader could roll in and roll lethal on Tarkin. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Pretty easily, but wait, wait. Okay. But doesn't doesn't uh, Snoke have indirect damage though? Oh yeah, there's damage everywhere. Sure. Yeah. So he has to roll not. But, but once Tarkin's gone, then you don't have the doubles. And so what he's saying is then Snoke right. rolls not focus and not. And then indirect. you have a fist to deal with. And then you have More, fist. <laughs> most importantly though, he needs All to right, get. What did he get? Seven value. Okay, he got a three on Vader and a plus three. Hmm. Okay, and is he's that got seven? A seven? Yeah, seven. So, so he could do friends in high places. For rise again. That's the real. Well, is that lethal showing? Sorry. No, I don't. There, wait, are there two resources? No, but there's a two indirect there. Token okay. Has a two indirect side. So, so now he does have a three shield showing there. I think on the dark saber. Hmm. <sighs> yep, that'll keep you alive. This is in the uh, playing not to lose as opposed okay. to playing. Okay, force illusion. Yeah, That's force illusion. All right. I respect that. Okay, here comes the fist, though. Fist of cuffs time. It has something to say about all this. What did you roll? It's a three. All right. Time That's to fine. It's still going to take Tarkin two actions here. Take the shields. Does he have friends or not? That's the question. Does, does, does Vader have friends? I mean, <laughs> the last friend he had, he pretty much choked to death. I'm pretty sure no one's his friend. That's the sad part. I mean, you've seen that meme where it's like, leaders uh, lift people up, right? And he's like choking that guy. Yeah, it's like, uh, leaders don't put people down, they lift people up. They lift up. people up. Yeah. <laughs> it's Darth like Darth Vader <laughs> philanthropist. <laughs> and that's why he has no friends in high or low places. That's right. All right. I think, I think if he doesn't have anything in his hand, you take the shield to extend. And then you use you have to use force illusion and I'm not sure like maybe fee to get money I'm not sure what's in his hand I don't really know what his outs are right now because there's just 
there's so many things that Ian has at his disposal, and I mean, I, I you only like have one resource. As Vader feels real bad, because the problem is, you really want someone dead at this point, right? But there are tricks in the the Vader deck. I'm just not sure what ones he wants to use here. But it's not over. If only guard was a neutral card, <laughs> <laughs> Vader decks would be nuts. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's four dice. Just All right, a hidden motive. Let's All right, see if is we it get six, six for six? six. Nope. It is no. It's five for six. It's coming down to the level percentages. What did he roll, though? Looks like in the smash, the disrupt. Okay, the disrupt. All right, here comes Snoke with two disrupts. So we have four Oof. indirect on the table, two indirect on the table. Showing. We have a two focus on Tarkin, which is a, really a four focus. This is where Keith needs a magical mind trick. And then another one. Yeah, he, another needs a, one. he needs a friends in high like you wouldn't believe. I mean, I believe. Surely it. you would have played it last round with the uh, hidden motive if you had it. Right. right so he's just going to hit for seven. He's going to pay one to roll back in. So essentially, he can illusion the first thing Ian does here. Okay. And now he's going to get at least a two. And he got shield. Which could keep him Actually, uh, Well, that, that's not bad. Anything that makes it another turn. That is not a bad thing. So Ian going to resolve the two mm -hmm. first, forcing yeah. the illusion. Yep. That means three shields is not enough. That is correct. It's like Ian he's, knows what he's doing out there, over there. Hmm. Go figure. And once again, look at this body language. Ian looks way more comfortable. Uh, that was four that he just milled. I think he I thinks he just can't. Oh, maybe he did with the power action. He did four and right. He did four and right with the power Got action. It. I misspoke. All right. Okay, he's smiling. I think he knows the truth now. <laughs> yeah, the, sh the shield is the truth. What, what's Some, the deck you had to choose playing in the other match? A oh, Vader. Vader. Yeah. But something I learned in Magic a long, long time ago playing tournaments, you make them win the game. Do not give up the ghost because your opponent could make a mistake that could give you the opportunity to win. Even this would require a, an enormous I know. level of mistake. But I've seen it happen before. So never give up the ghost. Always play it out until it's over. You've got nothing to lose. But yes, you're right. Like the odds are not in his favor. But it, it's been a long day. We've seen some mistakes. We no. could see another one. Ooh, doubt. All right. So All right. Anything but the two. Table. Is it a dis? Is it a yeah? Don't don't roll a uh, indirect. Because those are the only matching symbols. Is the two smashes, huh? Say, why do you call them that? Smashes? Yeah. It just looks like a resource is getting blown up. It's like it's getting smashed. <laughs> it's I think like a Hulk smash, like a fist yeah, punching. I mean, <laughs> we've, we've just said smash money since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I, I, maybe, I, I don't know where it originated. You, you caught me I've, off guard today and you're like, I smash your money. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've literally called it that from day one. I just think it's funny. Like, you asked me where Beagle comes from, like all these, all these little terms. Yeah. I feel like disrupt is such a weird word for it. It will just, it disrupts your economy. Yeah. All there right, there case. we go. There's the handshake. All right, so Excellent for a quick job. recap, first off, con huge congrats to Ian, making it all the way to the finals after losing his first game Hooray. of the day. Yeah. Which is impressive. I mean, that's hard to that do. Hard and to who do. did he lose his game? I don't remember. Oh. I think it was a guy, weird guy. Hmm. No, it was me. He lost to me, all right? Uh, and Keith, <laughs> he lost I, to Ray I, One and Boosh. I, that's right. <laughs> I want to say I am so proud of Keith. Um, yes. I'm making it this far. I'm about to go give him a hug. Uh, because I am so impressed. I am. It's so cool to see someone go from not playing this kind of games at all. Within a year, he's top four of a regional. So, huge congrats to you, man. Love watching you make it this far and hope to see you continue being successful. Ian, of course, always great to see you being successful. To everyone watching uh, and to all our subscribers and everyone that's pre-ordered a Convergence Saga set, thank you so much. You guys allow us to do what we do. We couldn't do things like this stream or our weekly streams or our podcast without any of you. So, much props. Thank you so much to John. Sugi, um, <laughs> not Saran. I said I was gonna say Jonathan, Jonathan Sugi, and then I just stopped. No, no, that's a good uh, thing. You actually know my name. I appreciate right. that. Uh, and Eric Wainwright, of course, for being on the stream. We're gonna cut out of here, and we're gonna take a little break while the other game finishes up, and then we are gonna come back live <gasps> with the finals. What's up? Um, and it is either going to be Snoke Tarkin versus Yoda Chewie, which would be awesome to watch, or Snoke Tarkin again versus Vader. Versus Vader. So. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Thank you all so much. We'll catch you on the next stream. And until next time, keep playing.